I wanted to talk about machine learning and give you an introduction to some of the techniques that are used in trying to make computers identify patterns. So I'm going to try and give a very basic overview of what these algorithms do and hopefully give you an easier way to think about it. One of the most common ways we try to use machine learning is with trying to identify objects in the real world. So, how do you get a machine to identify something? Well, how do you identify something? I mean, how do you know a chair is a chair or a dog is a dog? You probably look for some obvious signs you're familiar with, like what does it look like and what does it do? So think about it, when was the last time you actually saw something and didn't know what it was? If you did see it, you'd probably try to come up with a list of things in your mind of things that it could be and somehow you tried to relate back to this new thing that you saw. Well, that's kind of what machines try to do. So how do they do that? Let's talk about a data set. When we say data set, what we mean is a collection of stuff we have observed about something. And as ambivalent as that sounds, it's kind of true. Think about how you would know if it's a nice day. Well, you might say it would have to be sunny and warm. Sunny is what the sky is, warm is the temperature, and this is the stuff we observe about the day. And depending on this, we decide if it's a nice day. So if we collected a record of the sky and temperature every day, we would start to build up our data set. So let's change our language and say that temperature and sky are properties of a day, and what type of day it is is the class. So if someone doesn't tell us the type of day, we can look at the sky and the temperature and judging from our past experiences, we can tell if it's a nice day or not. So let's do a language check and say our data set is a collection of instances. And each instance is made up of properties and a class. And just like there are many different types of days based off these properties, there might be many types of classes too. People can make data sets about anything like the weather, stock market, infrastructure, and using past experiences we can make better decisions in the future. So for humans trying to decide if it's nice out, we can measure temperature by how hot or cold we feel and we can use our eyes to look at the sky to tell if the sun is out. For computers, it's pretty much the same thing, except they generally try to convert temperature and visual information into numerical data. One of the main differences between humans and machines is that machines do numbers really, really well. Imagine a data set with hundreds of classes and with hundreds of properties each. I couldn't make much sense of this, but a computer is really good at analyzing this type of data. Let's say I had a data set and it had the price of bread at the end of each day for the last couple of years. And I showed you like these thousands of numbers and I said, what can you tell me about this data set? Well, it's probably going to take you a long time before you can come back to me with anything meaningful. But for computers, they can do this really quickly. However, if I showed you a graph like this, you can probably see pretty quickly what exactly is going on. Well, what we can do is we can use the Euclidean distance to check how similar these things are. So what do we mean by Euclidean distance? Well, it's not so much a machine learning technique as opposed to a tool that can be used to test how similar objects might be to one another. In our examples, the Euclidean distance between two points is the length of the straightest line between them. So if two points are close to each other, they will have a small distance. And if two points are far away, they'll have a big distance. We can get this distance by minusing one from the other. Unless one is a negative number, then we should minus the square distance, but let's just kiss. What? No, keep it simple, stupid. Come on, guys. Take a bread price data set. We could draw it like this. I'm pretty sure you've seen these types of graphs over the last few years. In fact, it's pretty hard to miss them nowadays. Imagine you broke this graph up into instances that were a week long. In other words, each property would be the price of bread for that day, so each instance would be the prices for that week. And the class then we would give it would be a 1 if it rose from the last Friday, and a 0 if it didn't. There might be a pattern from the price moving throughout the week. We want to see if the rise and the falls have patterns similar to each other. Then we might be able to predict the state of the price by the end of the week. And that's why we want to measure similarity. Now, if you haven't already left a fire trail behind you as you confronted your boss and quit your job in some irrevocable manner, thinking you can become some sort of financial Nostradamus, making millions after some contrived example on a three minute YouTube video, just don't do that. It's not that easy and this is not the method you want to use for this. Basically, if the distance between two instances is low enough, they're probably trying to describe the same thing. We take two instances from our data set and we calculate the difference between the corresponding properties. We can add the totals to give us a result and if it's within our threshold, we can decide if it's similar enough. If on the other hand the two patterns are different, there will be a larger distance between them. Take a look at this example and notice that we compare our two instances the same way, but when you look at the graph, the patterns are quite different and there is a larger total distance between them. Okay, so that was a quick intro into how we use Euclidean distance in machine learning. Keep an eye out for our next video on dynamic time warping. Good luck!